Hello everyone. If you've ever owned an Intel-based Mac, you've probably heard of Boot Camp. That was Apple's official way to let you install Windows on a Mac computer. Boot Camp came out in 2007 with the release of Mac OS X Leopard, which is version 10.5. But before that, there was a beta that existed, and that worked on Mac OS X Tiger 10.4. This is the version that I have running on this 2006 Mac Mini which is one of the first Intel Macs ever released. This Mac Mini is an early 2006 model. You can see the model identifier is Mac Mini 1.1. It has a 32-bit processor and only one gigabyte of RAM. Here's the box for it. As you can see, it was advertised as BYODKM, which means that you would have to buy your own monitor, mouse, and keyboard. Here are the rest of the specs of this computer. As you can see, it originally had 512 megabytes of RAM, but that has since been upgraded. This is where I got the beta copy of Boot Camp from, MacintoshGarden.org. You can see how they advertise this. More and more people are buying and loving Macs. To make this choice simply irresistible, Apple will include technology in the next major release of Mac OS X, Leopard, that lets you install and run the Windows XP operating system on your Mac. Called Boot Camp, you can download a public beta today. So here's that downloaded. As you can see, it comes with a couple informational pieces. We have a install guide here as a PDF, as well as a README. And that's telling us that we need an Intel-based Mac, Mac OS 10 10.4.6 or later, as well as a blank CD, which I have here. So with this copy of Boot Camp, we're gonna try to install Windows XP on this Mac Mini and see how that works. One thing that was noted is that this beta of Boot Camp expired on January 1st, 2008, so in order to get it running today, I had to set the clock back to 2007. So let's go ahead and try to install this. Okay, that was successful. So now we should have the Boot Camp Assistant in our Applications folder. And there it is under Utilities. And as you can see, we get a notice here that this is Preview Software and that it is only supposed to be used as a trial and you're not supposed to store any sensitive data on the computer while you're using it. It's asking us to print out a copy of the setup guide, but I think I'll skip that. So we're going to need to burn a driver disk, which is why we needed that blank CD. And I'm going to just go ahead and insert the CD now and see if we can get that done. Thankfully, it should already come with the drivers included in the download, so we won't need to try to track those down today, which I'm sure would not be easy. And there's the dialog. We can go ahead and burn that. Okay, that completed successfully. So we only have a 60 gigabyte hard drive in this computer, so we won't have that much space for Mac OS or Windows. So I'm just gonna give the Windows XP copy 20 gigs, which is a little bit tight, but for XP, it should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and partition the disk. Okay, the partitioning is now done. So it's telling us to insert a Windows XP or a Windows Vista install disk and click start installation. So I have my legitimate copy of Windows XP here and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the drive. And let's do start installation. Oh, okay, I guess we have to actually wait for that to read first. All right, there we go. Start installation and we are rebooting. And there we go, it's just tiny there in the center of the monitor, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that. Okay, here we go. That is booted up, so we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And agree to that. And there is our C drive, uh, which the setup guide told us to install to, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And I guess we'll give it a NTFS quick format. And it's just copying some initial files to the hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and come back when it's rebooted. 
Okay, so here we are at this screen. I'm not going to record too much of this process because, I mean, it's just Windows XP installing. You've seen it a million times, but, yep, it's still going. Okay, we've made it past that screen, and now it's going to adjust our screen resolution slightly, which, of course, we can see because this monitor is 1920 by 1200. And we should be pretty close to getting to the final part of the setup here. All right, and here is our intro video. We have no sound drivers, unfortunately. Um, I'm gonna plug in some speakers into the headphone port just in case that does anything, but I'm not super hopeful. Yep, got speakers plugged in and nothing is coming out of them. So we just do not have sound. Might as well do this. All right, well, that was pretty quick. And here we are in Windows XP. And there it is, okay. Let's look at the properties window in my computer. Yep, you can see genuine Intel. And we have a Core Duo here. I'm gonna see if I can change the screen resolution a little bit. Uh, well, we can go to 1600 by 1200, which is better, but we'll need the graphics drivers in order to actually fix that. Thankfully, we have the driver disk we just burned. Let's see if the eject key works. And not yet, so I'll just do this. Yeah, sorry about the uh, flickering here. I'll uh, see if I can change the refresh rate here. And not yet. Yeah, okay, hopefully that'll just uh, go away after I install the drivers. Hopefully I should be able to reduce the flickering a little bit in uh, post-processing, but here we go. And we do want Apple software update. Okay, went ahead and switched to 24 FPS for a second, and that took away the flickering, so I'll switch right back to 60 when this is done, and hopefully we'll be able to get a clean picture. And yep. Our uh, Ethernet drivers are installed. As you can see, it's uh, found my network here. I have Ethernet plugged in. And yeah, we still have quite a few things that are not working, but it's quickly populating this list. And we even have Wi-Fi. That's pretty good. And we are now getting a graphics driver, hopefully. And we might have to restart for this, but... Oh, yeah, there we go can set it to the full 1920 by 1200 now. Awesome, okay. I'm gonna switch back to 60 FPS, see if that uh, looks a little bit better. And there we go, the flickering's gone. Okay, that's good. And let's see if we have the boot camp control panel yet. Probably installs that last, I bet. And we are frozen here, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. But yeah, I'll come back when the drivers are installed and show you how this works. Okay, this is finished, and we'll need to go ahead and restart, so let's do that. And here we go. Looks like it installed a uh, help file, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm surprised they actually uh, wrote all this, but that's pretty cool. And we do have the boot camp control panel here as well. And there you go, we have the startup disk preference panel here. And we can even use the uh, remote control, the white one, to control media playback. But yeah, not many options in here. Other than that, I mean, this is just pretty much a regular copy of Windows XP. Uh, let's go to this again. Yeah, still nothing... Uh, in like the OEM fields and the about page, nothing that says Apple. Pretty much all we get is the uh, boot camp help and the control panel here. And the date has automatically been fixed. I'm gonna go ahead and try to restart in Mac OS X and see if that left anything interesting there. 
All right, here we are back in OS 10. Let's see if we have a uh, preference pane for boot camp. No, we do not. So yeah, it seems like pretty much all we have in here as an indication that we even have Windows is the boot camp assistant. And like I mentioned before, that just tells you it's expired when the clock is correct, so. Let's put 2007 back. And there we go, yeah. It uh, doesn't actually let you boot from Windows from within this. It just lets you burn another disk or restart the installer or delete the partition. So I'm gonna go ahead and check one more thing here. And that is if Windows XP shows up in here. And yes, it does. And we can restart from Windows from within Mac OS X. And we can... <clears throat> And we can go ahead and boot Windows from within Mac OS or just reboot from the OS X partition. And yeah, that's about all there is to this bootcamp beta. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. There is not a ton more to show. So thank you very much for watching.